The migration of animals from sea to land, and then subsequently from land environments back into the sea, is a fascinating journey. It is widely considered to be one of the most important steps in the evolutionary history of life on Earth. The formation of the ozone layer high in the Earth's atmosphere about 600 million years ago provided organisms with a vital shield from harmful ultraviolet radiation. Photosynthesis, which had been occurring for many millions of years prior to this, facilitated this development by oxygenating the atmosphere. This increase in oxygen levels was also necessary for aquatic animals looking to venture onto land for the first time. The early Devonian was a major milestone for terrestrialization, marked by the appearance of low fin fish or sarcopterygians. This group of fish have characteristically powerful and muscular fins, features which would prove invaluable in their bid to invade the land. Plants were already well established on land by this time, and they diversified and evolved rapidly during the Devonian, leading to the emergence of the first forest environments. This effectively established a new habitat, a feasting ground for land animals to exploit. A group of vertebrate animals with four limbs, known as tetrapods, had been evolving in aquatic environments and were seemingly well suited, in fact, almost pre-adapted to make this important transition onto land. Land also provided the benefits of basking, where tetrapods settled in mud banks to enhance digestion, growth and maturation rates by heating the bodies whilst increasing reproductive success by securing safe zones for laying eggs where predation opportunities are limited compared to the treacherous rivers, lakes and seas. In the Middle Devonian, evolution saw the emergence of the peculiar tiktaalik, an intermediate creature between fish and tetrapod possessing powerful flipper-like lobe fins for swimming, an indistinguishable neck for grasping prey, broad overlapping ribs for support, and was equipped with girdle bones in the shoulder. Not long after came along Ichthyostega, capable of stabilizing itself via hind limbs rather than lobe fins, boasting a rigid rib cage with a large skeleton. Ichthyostega supported its chest via overlapping ribs attached to the vertebrae and possessed seven digits in the limbs which resembled a foot, allowing for mudskipper-like locomotion to occur, helping it traverse in shallow waters via punting until eventually deciding to venture out to conquer land. After the tetrapod amphibians had fully conquered the land, a new land animal evolved during the Cavaniferous. Reptiles, creatures with watertight skin that lay eggs with tough outer shells. These adaptations meant they no longer had to return to the water to reproduce, allowing them to dominate the land from the Cavaniferous through to the Permian. However, during the early Triassic period, some reptilian forms returned to the ocean, but what drove them to do so? One theory is the Permian extinction or Great Dying the most devastating mass extinction in Earth's history that wiped out over 90% of all species. This biological catastrophe may have led to previously occupied ecological opportunities becoming available to the survivors, possibly allowing marine reptiles to evolve. Ichthyosaurs were among the earliest marine reptiles to become fully aquatic. They evolved astonishingly fast, acquiring streamlined fish-like bodies reminiscent of modern-day dolphins. Losing the ability to venture onto land meant they evolved to birth live young, as evidenced by this 248 million year old fossil unearthed in China in 2011. Ichthyosaurs thrived in the oceans of the Mesozoic, alongside other marine reptiles like plesiosaurs, and eventually gave rise to the colossal 20 meter long Shonisaurus. Ichthyosaurs dominated Earth's oceans for most of the Mesozoic era, before going extinct 90 million years ago. However, reptiles such as plesiosaurs persisted and thrived until the Cretaceous Paleogene, another devastating mass extinction that left the seas and oceans of the world vacant once more. In the early Cenozoic, residing in semi-aquatic environments in Central Asia, was Pachycetus, an animal measuring no more than 4-5 to five feet in length. Yet, the presence of a thick bony wall around its middle ear indicates that this creature was the ancestor of the largest animal ever a member of the cetacean family, the blue whale. This metamorphosis would be a long process. Species such as Ampelocetus and Durodon exist at key points in the evolution of modern cetaceans. The trend is clear. Hind limbs are reducing significantly and eventually disappear entirely. The nasal passage moves up towards the top of the head, the eyes to the side, the tail becomes a fluke, with four limbs morphing into flippers. Here we see the result of this amazing evolutionary journey, modern day cetaceans, creatures that have evolved to dominate the oceans of the world entirely, odontocetes, toothed whales such as dolphins, and mystocetes, baleen whales such as the blue whale. New opportunities on land spurred tetrapods to colonize during the Devonian period. The Permian-Triassic extinction event created openings in the ocean for reptiles to exploit, while the cretaceous paleogene extinction marked the end of their dominance paving the way for new mammalian forms to emerge, 
and rule the oceans today. The conquest of land and return to the ocean by tetrapod organisms remains one of the most astonishing evolutionary tales ever told.